Hi hobby friends, let's keep up this Chaos Legion speedrun with the morose metal minions of the malevolent gods, the Iron Warriors. Now let me be real with you here, I asked you last time which legion you wanted to see next, and at the time of writing this script, the Red Corsairs were the nasties with the most votes, but two occurrences conspired to shunt those pirates up the queue. Oh, in case it wasn't obvious by the way, the first step on our termy here is to stipple on some super dark maroon brown with a sponge. So those two reasons. One, Warhammer Plus went and released a new animation starring this very Legion, and while I'm no trend chaser, it did seem a bit foolish just to let it pass by when this guy was already painted up and ready to start in a video of his own. And two, because that Red Corsair, which I have started on, well, I decided to do some oil paint work on him, and as we all know, oil paints aren't the fastest drying medium. Small miscalculation on my part there, I'm afraid. So here we are, sponging a metal man. As you've seen, it's a no-brain involved process of splodging on rusty browns and oranges. What we get from using a sponge and some heavy acrylics, see the paint list in the description if you want to know exactly which ones, is not only a nice rotten metal base, but actual physical texture on our guy. Yes, that's right, we are going all the way with Grim and Grimy this week. When that layer is good and dry, it's time to crack out the dry brush. By working gently with a really soft brush, we catch all the groobly texture we just made and leave the recesses all orange and rusty. We can build in a little lighting information at this stage too by using progressively lighter shades of silver and focusing each successive layer on smaller and smaller areas towards the top of the mini or wherever you think it would catch the light. We don't just want ancient rust on this guy however, so picking up that palette of browns and oranges again, I went in and added just a smidge more of those smudges, some lovely grim fresh rust. No, I haven't gone mad, there is a reason I'm sponging on pinks and purples here, and I bet more than a few of you can guess why. Pause the video and stick your prediction in the comments, no cheating. Yes, that's quite right, I've decided he's actually an Emperor's Children Legionnaire in disguise. Nah, just kidding, of course it's for underpainting. When I have a gradient of purple to white through pink, I grab some yellow ink and some matte varnish and I put a nice, even, transparent coat of that mixture on top, and voila, you have yourself a gorgeous yellow gradient. Yellow is a notoriously annoying colour to paint since all the non-highly toxic pigment options are transparent, but by using a pink and white underpaint you'll get yourself some nice lovely rich yellow. I do want that to be really set up and dried before I move on to the next stage on that shoulder pad, so let's throw some white on the dry brushing palette and run a brush over the furs, skulls and trophy loyalist helmet. Actually, we can use that helmet to prove a point. And not just the point that 8 points beat Corpse King any day of the week, oh no. Let's have a look at what the pink is adding to the equation with that yellow stuff while I block in some bits with contrast paints. That's a perfectly fine yellow, and there are even occasions when that yellow might be the one that you're looking for, but also look how much richer that pink underpainted yellow is well worth the effort, I'd say. Okay, throw down some gloss varnish on the shoulder pad and go make some coffee. The first 20 minutes of painting is done. When that gloss varnish is well and truly set, I pull out some super skinny masking tape. To be honest with you, if I were really army painting these guys rather than just one demonstration mini, I personally would be very tempted to freehand these stripes. Throwing down some straightish lines and filling them in would probably take me less time than adding that protective gloss layer and getting the tape lined up, but your mileage may vary and I fancied showing what a bit of tape and sponging looks like, so here we are. Lovely hazard stripes, just a little touch up and this chap will be meeting all his health and safety standards. If you find your black has snuck under the tape, just add a tiny smidge of white to your yellow and cover it up. That's good for adding some tasteful scratches too. 
All that was five more minutes and we are very much on the home stretch here. Just one more big job and that is blocking in the trim. Same as all the previous chaps, he gets three shades and I'm keeping things a little brighter than maybe seems fitting for a marine this filthy. But don't worry, this is going somewhere. Quickly throw some grey on the loincloth and why not let's do a simple freehand of one of those snazzy iron hand runes. And now it's time to add some oil to this engine of destruction. Real oil. In a little cup I have some lamp black oil paint and thinner and I mix it down to this consistency. We are going for an all over wash here and we want gunk and grime, so I'm not that fussed about graininess or a little inconsistency, just get it on here. I've gone nice and simple with just plain black here, but you can get all sorts of really cool effects by mixing in maybe a little blue or burnt umber as well. As always, I have to give a massive thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. The majesty of their excellence knows no bounds, and if you wish to throw your toad into the magic circle, you can join them simply by following the link below. Or if you fancy dropping a one-time tip, there's always the super like button as well. When the oil has had about 10 minutes or so of curing, all we do is go in with a cotton bud like this, or maybe a makeup sponge if you like, and clear up that oil paint, leaving the crevices and nooks nice and gunked up. If you have a little too much staining here and there, you can always make your cleaning implement slightly damp with a little of your mineral spirits and use that to lift the oil paint more or less completely off. Right, that'll want a little while to really cure up. The exact timing will depend on what paint, what consistency and what thinner you used, as well as the temperature of your room. But when it's more or less cured up, the last step is to go and tidy things. Just a literal two to five minutes of filling in the under armor that I'd missed and adding some edges to the face to make that really stand out. Oh, and of course the eye lenses were done as well. And there you have it, one times Iron Warrior Terminator all done up in a hair over one hour of painting time. What do you think? Let me know down below and don't forget to hit the like and sub button for more stuff and things. And I'll see you next time, maybe even with a red Corsair.